see what our target opportunity is, and let's compare the target opportunity with our current situation. And we define the target opportunity as a prospective job opportunity. Steve has generously offered some specifically one of the targets she was looking at was on a web page and the text of that was trans transferred into a way. So the way that this could work is to copy the text from a job description that you found that you want to apply at. And I'm going to copy that here from a Word document. And then you go to going to use a website called jobscan.co. And here is the, this is the tool that it's a machine reader that matches uh, keywords that you're, that you're targeting, okay? So paste job description here. We took the text from a job description which we're targeting. In this case, it's Treasury Man Manager for Eve, okay? And we just pasted it into a web. We went to another tool which it's called jobscan.co. And they will want you to register after you use times. But uh, the first time, it's, it's OK to do it without registering, OK? And so what we did was we're going to compare our, it says paste resume. So we could use our resume. Uh, but I'm going to suggest, rather than using resume on this, that we use our LinkedIn profile. And so I've got uh, Eve's LinkedIn profile. And one thing that may, may be um, uh, not obvious, but when you log into your profile on LinkedIn, it'll, pre it'll present like this. And, then, and you'll, they call edit mode, pencils there that let, lets you change pros on, on the LinkedIn profile. Uh, but it, at the same time, it won't show you everything in each module of there. So to counteract that, what you need, what you do is you go to pro view profile as select connections. View it as your connections, or you could view it as public. Okay, but I would say connections, and that changes the way your profile gets rendered on this view. And what I'm going to be doing is taking all text from her profile on LinkedIn and copying it. So we want to capture all the experience, the testimonials, the skills, the keywords, the education, organization, and so on, all the information that she's got all the way down to courses. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna copy that and go into the jobscan.co portion where it says resume. So we're using the LinkedIn profile as the uh, resume. And we're using the job description on the um, other side. And then we're going to simply be a machine reading output. That what are the matching Okay, So the match rate, in the case that uh, this is telling me that there are um, match rate, Eve, okay, and it's showing the skills comparison uh, where the word conversion was mentioned on the job description, but it's not mentioned in your profile. Okay. Oh, interesting. It was mentioned twice in the, in the job description. So what you, what you want to do, I'm going to do this for you, okay? So at this stage, these are the job scan results. And so what I like to do is do a print out of the day. So I'm going to do a print to, in this case, I'm going to do a print PDF reader, and I'll give you a PDF when we're done here. And so you'll have, um, you'll have a copy of the here. But this, okay, so the word transactions was mentioned twice in the job description. That's really cool. This really highlights where using alternate words or abbreviations kind of um, is a problem. Yeah, it, it's, and it's an easy fix as well, too, because it gives you right. it 
gives you the words over here mm -hmm. that you can add in. For instance, the word financing is mentioned on the job description and, and it's missing from your profile. So if, you, if you're targeting company, uh, other opportunities like this Equinix one, you might add that word financing into your profile. Or financing, so modeling skills, investment banking. It was, you got a good match. So 57% of the keywords that they identified as uh, important skills were, were matching on yours and theirs. And these that were on theirs that were not on yours, equity research, CFA, certification, capital markets. And, and I can tell you I have every one of those in, in my job description in a different variation. So I can definitely tweak my resume to make it match. That's great. That's the yeah, purpose of this that's tool. that's amazing. It's the principal purpose of this tool. It, and, and it just makes it easy. It's, it's, it brings the visibility to something that you can quickly you can you can uh, quickly just layer that in on your profile it into the categories so here what they label as hard skills it's showing that in your job, your linkedin profile director was mentioned three times and director was mentioned twice in their job description um, conversion the word conversion was mentioned in theirs twice and it's missing from your profile. So these red letter areas could be, uh, at least for the hard skills, I think they're more important to add those red letter words, analytical. Um, and the more times it appears in your, in your LinkedIn profile, the, you, you, you might want to add some words in three times on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, sure. you got tax and finance in there seven times. Those are good. For anyone that's searching on tax and finance, you're going to show higher. And um, if you want to, if you want to show higher for other keywords, then adding those in multiple times is okay as well. This also explains why people keep contacting me for tax jobs, and I really don't do that much tax. <laughs> so you can trim, you can trim it out on those. Um, mm -hmm. Soft skills. They have a different category for soft skills. Integrity is in there, but they have reliability. And written communication is uh, in, as a couple of a, a other things, that, and meet deadlines, uh, which may be important for uh, for you to add those in. Um, other keywords, which they don't put in the category of hard skills or soft skills, includes treasury compliance analysis, support debt. You got those. Uh, supporting is I don't know if that's really going to be something critical for you, but capital uh, that might be something to add in capital and. Compliance. Uh, yeah. Compliance. Never mind. You covered on compliance. Okay. So that would be one thing you can do in this jobscan.co tool. Just, just just look at your LinkedIn profile. I think it's okay. here somewhere. There you go. Okay. So how you rank for profile views. So this is something that you want to look at this too. So you rank in the top 35% of profile views among your connections. And then you want to go to this thing here where it says, okay, you need to have an, if you have an, a, a premium account with LinkedIn, you'll be able to use this. Uh, without a premium, you, you won't see how you rank against your peers. But what I was going to suggest, if you could rank against your peers, that you put, you pick the top number one or number two, person that shows up on that list, scan and copy and paste their file into this tool on the side where you would have last time where we where we uh, scanned our own in, in here. So you would be able to, to, you could scan yours and you could scan theirs side by side. Yeah. Here's here. But you know you can get a free LinkedIn uh, preferred profile for like 30 days. It doesn't cost you anything to use it for 30 days. So you can do this and cancel and uh, it, uh, accomplish what you want without having to pay anything. That's, it, it just put a note in your calendar to cancel with before 30 days is up, right? Right. Uh huh. So um, if you've got any people here that it, you might also do, you know, you I, I don't know if this is the same type of person that is, he's an audit, you're in Treasury. So I think it's better to go into here how you, uh, it, 
the, um, the stack ranking for how you rank uh, versus for professionals like you. This is this is what you're gonna you're gonna look for as a way to compare uh, yours and theirs in this tool, and that'll give you e e even more insights than a job description will about missing keywords. Great. Okay, and that that would even be that would be. Um, that would be level two as far as this thing goes. 